Hello, welcome to the program. Since the billions of dollars from the stimulus package have come out of Washington from the Obama administration and from Congress, the people of the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas and the border region, all the way from Brownsville, El Paso, and back down to Laredo, have been scurrying to find out how much of those dollars are going to be used for transportation projects and other projects along the border region. We have before you today to discuss some of these projects, how important they are to the economy of the U.S. and Mexico, Mario Jorge, who is representing Amadeo Sainz, Executive Director of TexDOT. Mario, in particular, is the District Engineer for the Rio Grande Valley District. Mario, thank you for coming and being with us. Welcome. Eddie Camperano, Port Director from the Port of Brownsville. He's here to discuss, in particular, a very important project called the East Loop project for the city of Brownsville, which has primarily been designed through the years to direct commercial truck traffic specifically from coming in from Mexico and then around by the International Airport and then over to the port of Brownsville. Thank you for coming and being with us here today, Eddie Campirano. First of all, one day after State Senator Judith Zapparini urged the Texas Transportation Commission to approve funding for the Cuatro Vientos Highway Project in Laredo, the TTC committed to spend $31.5 million for that particular project, 7.2 miles of a four-lane project, which will expand and improve US 83 once you get into the city of Laredo, where every day more than 13,018 wheeler trucks cross that port, those land ports at Laredo, the number one and largest import port in the United States of America. Now, some of those 13,000 trucks head south from Laredo to the port of Brownsville. We're going to be talking a little bit about the importance of the bypass currently in the works of Roma, Rio Grande City, and we're going to talk to Mario Jorge a little bit more about that later in the program. But first of all, let's talk about your project, Eddie, in the city of Brownsville. In particular, why is the East Loop so important to the citizens of your community, to your port, and to the economy? Well, I guess in the simplest sense, Ron, it just simply ensures the flow of commerce that is necessary between Mexico and the United States. Uh, uh, the, uh, the East Loop would essentially uh, replace an existing overweight truck corridor that is in place, and uh, it is our hope that it will be extended. Uh, and when that East Loop project is completed, then the East Loop would handle all of the truck traffic uh, that is going to be carrying overweight cargo between the Veterans Bridge at Los Tamales and the Port of Brownsville. Uh, we're talking about a program that uh, generates revenue for the state of Texas. We're talking about a program that since its exception has issued over 360,000 permits. Uh, it, it's a win-win. It, it really allows for the free and safe movement of trade uh, between the Port of Brownsville and Mexico uh, primarily. So. We're here on the program today to announce the fact that this has been funded. It's a great day on this program, a great day for the Port of Brownsville, a great day for TexDOT and for Amadeo Sainz with his spokesperson here, Mario Jorge, today. Long time you've been working, pushing for this project, and now it has been funded. It is in the record books. Rene Oliveira, state representative who represents the region where this project is going to be, has said that he is very excited about the work that everyone has done all the stakeholders, your agency, Port of Brownsville, him as the state representative, the state senator, Eddie Lucio, finally being able to wrap a, a ribbon on top of this bow and call it a done deal, at least it's, as, far as, as far as the funding is concerned, right? The project that was funded by our commission with the economic stimulus uh, uh, bill mm -hmm. is the, the extension from the Port of Brownsville north uh, along new location to tie in with 511 just north of uh, Alton Glow Road, and then, of course, onto the expressway. That's about a $35 million project that has already been funded through the stimulus project. Now, in the city of Laredo, the Cuatro Vientos Highway Project has been approved for funding and will begin to be constructed, a seven-mile project, $37 million in highway transportation funding. And we talked to the chief of the planning department for the city of Laredo, Keith Selman. We, like many communities, experience congestion along our principal corridors. 
US 83, which is a primary corridor in South Laredo, is one of our most heavily congested corridors in our community. What the Cuatro Vientos does is it provides a parallel to that roadway. In this map, you can, you can see uh, very faintly that US 83 running this way. It's connecting Laredo with the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas. Correct. Once you get into the urbanized area of Laredo, it becomes heavily congested. Uh, very difficult to move along that corridor, and uh, we're in desperate need of a reliever route to that. This is what Cuatro Vientos provides for us. It is a reliever route to US 83. We have seen US 83 become a really rapidly developing commercial corridor. Commerce is moving up and down uh, this corridor, getting from the valley into Laredo and back again. This improvement would reduce that travel time. And, and it would reduce it significantly. Now, fellas, as you heard the planning director for the city of Laredo explain, they see more and more commercial truck traffic coming between South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley, Brownsville, McAllen, Far, all the way up to Roman Rio Grande City. They need to go around those communities getting to Laredo. Absolutely. You also see the same thing, Mario? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we've seen tremendous growth in that corridor. Um, in, in traffic volumes, uh, a lot of that is probably attributed to the population growth uh, within the same corridor in the, in the Star County area in particular. Uh, we've been working on a project now for, for some time to uh, uh, bypass Riona City and Roma through a relief route. Uh, it is on the north side of 83. Uh, $200 million project. $200 million project, that's the latest estimate. Uh, with about all 22 the, miles? Right, about 22 miles, uh, give or take uh, a little bit. Uh, four-lane interstate quality. Yeah, it'll be a four-lane inter interstate type with uh, overpasses and what have you. That, that's the that's what's being uh, developed right now from a plan standpoint. Uh, Is that real important for the Port of Brownsville to have these bypasses to really create this NAFTA corridor on this side of the border? Because really, Mexico has uh, pretty good uh, transportation on their side to connect up all the maquilas in the twin plant process. Well, connectivity uh, is critical, I think, between Laredo and, and, and uh, the Valley. And if we talk about the Port of Brownsville, it just it provides access to a different mode of transportation for goods that maybe they're being shipped into the nation and then shipped to Mexico, or it provides an alternate route to ship uh, goods outside of, 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 of Mexico that may be going elsewhere. So, you know, to a shipper, if you can cut down on time and expense, I mean, that's a valuable commodity. And so consequently, and the commercial trucking business and with as much volume of trucks that we have going and, and and keep in mind that a lot of these trucks are not going to transporting containers and containers are easily mobile I mean you can move containers by rail you can move containers by barge you can move containers by uh, deep sea vessels so you know consequently creating that connectivity uh, again is real important uh, if, if it's if it means a time savings and an expense savings to a shipper of goods then the area as a whole becomes much more attractive uh, it creates an opportunity to have a freer exchange of goods between regions. And uh, even though it's all of the South Texas region, there's obviously very heavy pockets within that that are uh, uh, economic regions, whether it's Monterrey, Laredo, Laredo North, or, or Laredo, the Brownsville. That whole region, uh, the greater connectivity, the easier and safer uh, movement of goods back and forth uh, is, is going to be a plus for the region. And explain to the audience why the relationship is so important between your port and Mario's agency, TxDOT, uh, tying into the economies of Mexico, primarily Monterrey, to your port, because your port really, in fact, is the port of northern Mexico. Yeah. The best way for me to explain it is this, is TxDOT is in the transportation business. They're in the business of creating avenues for movement of people and goods. We're in the business of generating traffic. We're in the business of generating those goods that are necessary to be moving to those destinations. That economy, where those that's jobs. Correct. So it's real critical that from the port standpoint is that we have the necessary road infrastructure uh, uh, to, to be able to create that. Mm -hmm. If not, what you're going to have is you're going to have uh, the kind of traffic in, in, in what can conceivably be uh, areas of, of the city or areas of the valley that are not simply designated for the movement of those goods. So uh, while they're in the business of transportation and moving people and goods, you know, we're in the business of generating that 
uh, traffic that is necessary to go from point A to point B. So it's very re important. I mean, the, the relationships uh, uh, with TxDOT are critical to us because, uh, uh, you know, that, that is a tremendous asset when it comes down to our ability to attract commerce and our ability to uh, provide options for the movement of that commerce. So the Obama stimulus package is going to be creating jobs during the construction of all of these highways as funded. And then once they're created, then the economy stays and the jobs being stabilized, being created, being saved to a big degree, then it falls necessarily on Eddie Camperano and the Port of Brownsville because you're going to be connecting this commerce, the number one trading partner of Texas, that being Mexico, and the United States, number three trading partner, Mexico, from Monterey north to Laredo, then down through the bypass, hopefully when it's completed, Roma River Grand City, down to the Port of Brownsville. Uh, essentially, it's not is only... Is that simple enough for the audience to understand? Well, you, you know, our goal is to sustain employment and create new employment opportunities, whether it comes through Laredo to Brownsville, the port, or whether it comes through Matamoros to the Brownsville, the port. You know, we need to have those opportunities continue to grow that commerce. And, you know, having a, a, a good infrastructure for the movement of those goods is not only good for commerce, but it's also good for the residents because you separate the commercial traffic from the general traffic. And a lot of the projects that we're talking about are geared towards moving commercial traffic. They're not necessarily going to be how do you get from the grocery store to the school to right. the neighborhood. So we essentially are taking these vehicles off of some of these corridors that are now competing for, for, for traffic space and moving up off these traditional corridors and putting them on specially designed corridors that are designed to create that connectivity between those types of vehicles that are necessary to for that flow of commerce directly. So it, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. It really is. Are you surprised to hear that the city of Laredo and its, uh, its director of, of planning and other leadership in Laredo is excited about trying to have better con connectivity with the Port of Brownsville? Because over the, t over the years, it has been felt that Laredo and Corpus Christi were basically the symbiosis. Because, because, but obviously, they're now seeing that they need to connect to your port as well as the port of Corpus Christi. Well, again, if, if you can cut down on the time and you can cut down on the expense, there's, there's, a, there is a, there, there's a plus to be had there. And, and consequently, if, if we're seeing a greater uh, trade movement be, you know, going east and west between Brownsville and Laredo uh, versus just simply north and south, and we're becoming just pass-through points for other destinations either in Mexico or outside of the valley, uh, that's good too. But you know, th th this population is growing, and, and, and there is a, a tremendous need for the kinds of goods and services that are flowing through these international crossings. And if we can provide that connectivity that's going to make it easier to flow uh, those the, those goods, and you know we're all better off for it. Thank you for coming to meet with Thank us you, on the Ron. program. Thank you, Mario Jorge. Sir, your audience now, David Garcia, who is Cameron County's Regional Mobility Authority Assistant Coordinator. David, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Someone who's been on the program many times, you recognize, I'm sure, Carlos Cuscus, who's the County Judge for Cameron County, the county seat being Brownsville. Carlos, thank you for joining us. Thank Developing you. partnerships, regionalization, something that Judge Koskis and I have talked about many times on this program. If you're a, uh, someone who has watched the program for many years, you know that we have discussed that. Somewhat excited, are you, Judge, about the fact that Laredo wants to now create more of a direct corridor, improvements to US 83 between their community, Laredo, all the way down to your community, Brownsville, and the Port of Brownsville. Why excited about that? You know, it, it, it is encouraging because I don't believe that we have been talking about this issue a year ago or two years ago. Uh, it's important that, that you know, we, as you know, we've long promoted a, a regionalism, a, a regional approach to everything that we do. And it's important that, that Laredo realizes the importance of the connectivity to South Texas, more specifically all the way down to the Port of Brownsville. So the President of the United States engaged, his stimulus money now being used maybe a fulfillment of a campaign promise made on this program to try and provide this conductivity, these highways. You've got a project that, that may be coming online very quickly between your community all the way north to I-37, extension of 37 from the Port of Corpus Christi to the border of Brownville. Why is it important to connect these two ports, Corpus and Brownville? Well, you know, it's not just important to connect the, the noises, the, the Corpus Christi port in Brownsville, but the other thing that we have to also realize is that our economy is, is contingent on the, the integrity of our infrastructure. You've got to have multiple connectivity points. 
But something that we have not mentioned is something, the, the importance of, of legitimate evacuation routes. And uh, as, as you know, if, if you travel between Brownsville or Hidalgo County or Cameron County into uh, Webb County, you've got to go through Star. And there's a, there's a tremendous bottleneck when you enter into Star, into Star County via Rio Grande City uh, because there's, I mean, you have to go through downtown. And, and it's, they're narrow streets. Uh, and if, if we ever do need to use that evacuation route, you can when? always see when, when, you know, when we have to use those evacuation routes, yeah. you're going to see the bottleneck. So it's important that, that, we, that we emphasize the infrastructure and continue promoting. You know, like I said, you know, Laredo is, is, is our partner. I know the county judge of, of Webb County well, and, and we've talked briefly about the relationships that we can establish with, with South Texas. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see that that's coming to fruition now. A NAFTA corridor, U.S. Business 83, from the Rio Grande Valley to Laredo. Why is that important? It's important, Ron, because we want to make sure that we have options um, coming across our international borders. We want to make sure that we have trade with the port in Brownsville. Um, when the Panama Canal opens up <coughs> and the congestion in, in L.A. and Long Beach um, gets worse, we need to be in a position to open up our trade corridors and be able to move that traffic not only to Houston but east, west, and also north, south. As you, a proponent for regionalization, developing partnerships, Laredo, McAllen, Far, your community in Brownsville, going north to Corpus Christi, then on to Houston, San Antonio. Shouldn't they be partners also, Houston and San Antonio, of this overall endeavor? Because it really funnels uh, import, export and imports both to and from all of these communities. We've got to get away from, from thinking that, that, uh, that everything stops at our, at our county line. You know, Hidalgo County has been very, very um, gracious and, and, and informative as they work through their flood control. You know, they know that that water has got to go someplace and it's got to come through either Willacy County or Cameron. And so we, we've developed that dialogue and this dialogue has been there since, since uh, I got elected. Uh, and we're going to hope to continue. With that, we continue going north, west, east to the adjoining counties and continue with that dialogue. Exciting days in the future for the economy of the region of South Texas, Judge. You know, we, these stimulus monies are very, very competitive. So it's good that the, the South Texas delegation comes together as one voice as well and, and, uh, and, and appropriates or tries to lobby and advocate for our region for this stimulus money. And, you know, there's, there, there's, there's power in numbers. So you get the, if you get the whole border, South, you know, legislative agenda, legislative folks together, it can only be good for South Texas. And whatever's good for South Texas is going to be good for the country. Thank you, David. Thank sir. you for joining us. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with Thank us. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for being with us. Till next time, adios.